Hello everyone, this is Quinn the Princess. And God God. And today we are reading Chapter 7 of Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. Chapter 7, Wheat and Chaff. Author's note. Hello friends. Whew, this chapter took longer to write than I thought it would. There is so much to be done here at Fort Parsons. Some days, I don't think I'll ever get caught up. But now that the little ones are sound asleep, I'm finally getting around to putting the finishing touches on this little chapter. I apologize for the delay. Now, there have been quite a few questions and comments coming in, and I thought I should take the time to address a few, since I don't have time to reply individually. First of all, to all the mommies who have expressed their appreciation of this little story of mine, thank you. Your support keeps me writing. Remember, though, the glory is not mine. It is all in the work of a greater cause. And the people who call me names, a Bible-believing Christian, is like a big, ugly monster who lives under a bridge. Wanting everyone to do the right thing and go to heaven makes one a so-called bigot, hmm? Well, that's this modern world for you. And finally, to the people who say that I am spreading hate, take a look at some of the comments posted here, saying that I am a terrible writer and a terrible mother whose children will hate her one day. <laughs> Who is it who? Yeah, like, who is it who? Who is it who? It's Brett and Hate here. Because I don't think it's me. You tell him, Aaron of the Cullen Clan. I mean, you know, proud housewife. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Hall burst into applause as a red and yellow baseball cap with a lion embroidered on the front appeared on Harry's head. He hopped deftly off the table and landed on his little feet. He could feel the love of the Lord surging through him, and he knew he had made the right decision. He was even more sure of his decision when Hermione dashed across the cafeteria to give him a big, spontaneous hug. Whereupon she promptly put a chloroform cloth to his head and knocking him unconscious. No, 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 that didn't happen. <laughs> she, too, was sporting a red and yellow baseball cap, although her cap had a kitten on it instead of a lion, because she's a woman and women can't afford to be proud and courageous like lions and little delicate kittens and blah, 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 blah. Whatever. I'm so happy, Harry, she cried gladly, delicate tears streaming down her face. When I saw you eating with that family, I was so scared. I thought you might become a Slytherin. Never worry about that. Harry declared boldly and bravely. <laughs> and badly. <laughs> <laughs> I am a Gryffindor, now and forever. Well chosen, Dumbledore declared approvingly as he took a long, energetic strides to cross the crowded, noisy room. It's pretty spry for an old man. <laughs> Welcome to the Gryffindor hat, Harry. It's sort of confusing how they put hat as sort of like a... Uh, Substitute for house. Right. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, it's a singular now, not a plural. Eh, it's fine. Just roll with it. Just Every time they say hat, they mean house. So. <laughs> Harry beamed happily. Truly, he had been blessed. As he sat down to finish his breakfast, and he was still glowing from joy, he sat back next to Ronald. Will you still be my friend, even though you are a different hat? Ronald asked timidly. Of course, Harry declared generously, and he began to eat his eggs. He had expected his eggs to be cold by now, what with all the hullabaloo, but lo and behold. <laughs> it's like, like the beginning of a uh, prudent love, lo and behold. <laughs> but lo and behold, they were still piping hot. He would not pretend that would Ronald believe about worshipping the dead? <laughs> what? I don't know. When did Ron ever say that? The dead, like, is in Mary and the saints, I guess. I guess, but that's kind of a stretch, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, there's a huge difference between iconography and necromancy. <laughs> well, you know, uh, ancestor worship. That's true, but I mean, I don't think that's uh, what they were discussing. I know. It's very... I, I think Harry is uh, one to jump to conclusions a little bit. Oh, goodness, where was I? He would not pretend that what Ron believed about worshipping the dead, 
but he could still offer the young boy friendship in the spirit of Matthew 2, 16, 17. Matthew 2, 16, 17. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with the pub, pub, publican, and when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with the publicans and sinners, they said upon... I swear to God. <laughs> it's okay. They said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are... Damn. I hate the reading the Bible. <laughs> They, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I don't remember who wrote Matthew exactly, but... Wasn't it Matthew? I, well, I know some of them were written. Well, like, yeah, I guess it would be yeah. Matthew. Yeah. I love how <laughs> the author was like, he had to describe... Like, he had to describe that they were Pharisees and publicans, and then say, how can you, like, in the same sentence? It's, like, very, it's, like, a very bad example of writing. Like, you're not supposed to say what you just explained. Like, how can you eat with publicans and sinners, he said, referencing the publicans and sinners that he was eating with. Like, What's a publican? I don't exactly remember. It's some, it's, like, a, a political thing. Mm. A Republican. A Republican, yes. How could you eat with Republicans and sinners? And preps. <gasps> Thank you, Harry! Ronald uttered happily. He may have been sporting a green and black hat with a snake on it, which testified his Slytherin beliefs, but he could recognize Harry's pure-hearted godliness, generosity, humility, and innocent goodness. He looked around at his siblings. All, like, 50 billion of them, apparently. <laughs> All of them wearing identical hats to his. And he wondered why none of them were like that. Not one single one. <laughs> <laughs> Out of 50 billion. Attention, students! Reverend Dumbledore announced authoritatively as he hopped onto the stage. And he held the microphone with his mouth. <gasps> what? <laughs> That's not how you do microphones. Professor, wouldn't it be more convenient to actually hold the microphone when you're speaking? Don't interrupt me, but I'm in the middle of a very important doctrine. All right. I'll just let you do your thing then. Congratulations on picking your hats, he continued kindly. I'm sure you have all chosen wisely. I'm going to assume that while Harry was choosing his, everyone else, everyone else did, but apparently, it, it, just like in the Harry Potter books, no one else is important as Harry, so we only care about what hat Harry got. Well, that's canon. <laughs> right. Harry hummed to himself. He knew that the Reverend meant well, but was it really doing the members of the other hats much good to tell them that everything was the same when it wasn't? Wouldn't they all be happier if they knew to read the Bible and take it seriously? Dumbledore thought he was making everyone happy, and perhaps he was in the short run. But in the long run, Harry worried that he was doing more harm than good. Because, you know, apparently freedom of religion is a very bad thing in Gryffindor hat. Free will, what's that? Harry did not say anything, because he was new to the flock, and didn't feel confident in his connection to the Lord. But sometimes it takes a newcomer to point out the flaws that we don't see in our own communities. The Reverend clapped his hands against each other once. <laughs> that was really loud, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then he spoke enthusiastically. Now you will be sharing most of your classes with other members of your hat, so it would be good for you to get to know them now. Ravenclaw hats, please gather around Mr. Moody. Hufflepuff hats, please gather around Mr. Sprout. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Sprout? <laughs> Miss, Mr. Sprout. Mr. Sprout. A woman can not be a teacher. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, except McGonagall is... Uh, well, no, she's just the Reverend's wife. 
Oh. I wonder if I wonder if the real prof- uh, Professor Sprout just like put on a fake mustache so she could still teach her class. For real? Be like, I'm sorry, Professor Sprout, but you're a woman and we can't have you teaching classes here. I'm not a woman. What are you talking about? I have this mustache. Oh, I apologize. I thought she was somebody else. So please continue. <laughs> Very sneaky, Professor Sprout. Slytherin hats, please gather around, Mister Finnegan. Why, he's a first year just like us. <laughs> <laughs> and a Gryffindor hat, no less. Don't question my decisions! Wait, I'm sorry, why am I teaching these classes again? I know nothing about, you know, teaching potions or anything like that. Pipe down, Mr. Finnegan! <laughs> Don't question the ways of the Reverend Dumbledore! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go learn how to blow things up, class! Hooray! And Gryffindor hats, please gather around! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Snape! <laughs> Whenever you will be head of house, that's you. <laughs> who will be head of house Gryffindor? Snape. <laughs> and who will be head of house Slytherin? Hagrid. Oh, what fresh hell is this? <laughs> now, at the beginning of the breakfast meal, Harry had noticed a tall, mysterious-looking man with long, dark hair and gaunt, enigmatic features. He was dressed stylishly in a crisp black suit. Very swanky, Snape. (laughs) And his tie made a shock of red in the otherwise totally black outfit. The dark hair on his pale chest. (laughs) Why does every guy have chest hair in this story? It's so gross! If he's wearing a suit, why would you even be seeing his chest hair? I don't know. He also had underwear. <laughs> <laughs> the dark hair on his pale chest was neatly trimmed, but still noticeably thick. Oh, Excuse me, I'm gonna go puke for a second. And he wore elegant black leather shoes on both of his feet. <laughs> I love how it has to specify. <laughs> like, it's plural shoes, but they still had to say that he was wearing on both of his feet. Just, like, so you didn't imagine him, like, putting them on his ears or something. It was now that he noticed that on the table that this man was sitting at was a placard on it that said, Mr. Snape. I'm not even going to comment on how grammatically incorrect that sentence was. <laughs> Harry followed the other brave young children wearing Gryffindor hats. Oh, there's no blessings. How do you know they're brave children? Because Gryffindor hats are supposed to be brave. I guess if they're following Professor Snape, they would have to be. <laughs> oh, good lord. Oh, I, don't... I love how Finnegan is now. <laughs> I know! <laughs> Mr. Finnegan! <laughs> he's like 11, and yet he's somehow in charge of all the Slytherins. <laughs> I hope he's a Slytherin hat in this one at least. I don't know. He might be. He might be a Gryffindor hat like he is in the books. But I can just imagine like all these Slytherins gathered around expectingly waiting for him to be say something. He's just like, um, okay. Uh, today we're going to, um, uh, do some potion work. And we're going to, uh, pour this green stuff into the cauldron it looks pretty good let's just pour it in there and then we're gonna take this other stuff and we're gonna we're gonna pour that in there too (laughs) okay class that was the lesson number one on what not to do in potions class i hope you're all taking very good notes (laughs) (laughs) best teacher ever (laughs) 